Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is David Ludwig, Artistic Advisor to the President and Chair of Composition Studies at the Curtis Institute of Music, as well as serving as Artistic Director of Curtis Summerfest. David, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. Well, you know, obviously it's so wonderful uh, to be able to have you on the show and there's so much that we could talk about, but I figure, you know, Curtis has really been, you know, on the forefront of so much, but looking at kind of technology, right, and how we've all had to make this shift, I thought I kind of would, that that would be a great place to start. Um, and so just wondering, are there any key things that you've been doing at Curtis that really kind of has incorporated that use of technology that may have been sparked because of COVID, but now might some of it might remain? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. COVID, of course, accelerated a lot of things that were probably inevitable anyway. Um, a few things that I can think of, you know, every conservatory has had to reconcile how to teach remotely. Um, Curtis in particular, has been online for the entire school year. So for us at the school, we've really had to think very and be very thoughtful about how to teach lessons and give classes online. But outside of that, um, I've started something called an imagination pod with a small group of students where they can compose and perform using electronic resources um, and really have the time uh, to get deep into, uh, into tools, into electronic tools to make new music and new sounds. Um, but then also a Curtis Mentor Network, which is a, um, a way of helping alumni cultivate online teaching studios. And as COVID goes away, knock on wood, um, we will continue to be teaching online students from around the world. So this is a great way to help alumni um, have their own teaching studios and, and create revenue for themselves, but also a way for our current students to interact with students around the world through alumni and um, bring in and send the message and our own musical inheritance to share that with students really anywhere in the world and create pathways to access for them. So actually, you know, um, it's been an incredibly difficult, challenging time for many people. Musicians have very specific set of challenges from this time. So that's really what we've been trying to address at the school. Right. So say, for example, connecting with the alumni, how, how does it actually work? So say, you know, someone's at another, you know, one of our institutions who's, you know, who's watching uh, today and they're thinking, okay, we really want to try and maybe set something like that up at, at our institution. What would you say kind of, you know, some of those key steps that they need to do to actually make this happen? The way that ours is set up is that it's a six week program with a tuition. Um, everyone is admitted. So all you do is enroll. Uh, and when you do that, you get weekly lessons with an alumni mentor, someone who we know is a fantastic teacher. Um, and you also get studio classes where you play for the other participants in your studio. And those are mentored by current Curtis students. So we have this um, kind of a, a, a virtuous uh, pretzel in a way, everything reconnecting back into the school. Um, we have some professional development classes. So it's like a six week course. It's not meant to replace your weekly teacher that you might have at home, but it's a way of getting a boost. Maybe if you're applying to conservatory or to a competition or to a music festival, or just really want to up your game and work with someone who went to Curtis and had it, you know, it's a little further down the road. Awesome. 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 Well, that sounds great. And the name of that specific initiative again is just so people right now it's the Curtis mentor network is mentor what it's network. called. And it's, many instruments, string instruments, winds, brass. Um, and recently we've added composition, which has been really fun and conducting. Cool. Awesome. And of course, well, this, piano as well. 
This kind of innovation, I mean, it's so it's so key. Um, so along those lines, also one of the things that you're able to to really be involved in is Curtis's Performance Innovation Lab. Um, and so, just wondering if you could share a little bit more uh, about that work. Sure. The Performance Innovation Lab is something that's been uh, ideated about at, at Curtis for for some time, um, and it's a it's a dream project really and it's it will probably eventually be an actual lab a physical space where students can come and work with tools technology tools to to create art and realize art um, the executive director of it is vince ford who recently has come to curtis from the new york phil where he's directing uh, digital marketing and and the whole digital strategy as well um, and we see this as a place where students can learn to use technology, not just to create electronic music, but to, to add, to augment their own practice. Um, I think every student should know how to make a decent recording of themselves, for instance, before they leave school. That's, that's a very fundamental thing. And it doesn't matter if all they have is their iPhone and maybe a little mic, whatever gear they have, how can they put their best foot forward in the digital realm? And something we've learned during COVID is, we don't all have access to sound engineers and studios um, so that when that's restricted, uh, how can we still do the very best? On top of that, learning how to use software to edit yourself, all of this DIY is really a part of how we present ourselves in the digital space. It all starts with great artistry. And if you have really great ears and know what you're doing, everything else is just reading manuals. <laughs> well, you know, and it seems just so key that these types of skill sets, right, which seem to be growing conservatories, music schools around the country, that we've got to do more than just teach the discipline, teach the instrument, um, teach even composition, that we've got to provide these additional skill sets so that they can actually bring their artistic talent to bear. Is that, do you kind of see that evolution really taking place at, at Curtis? I do. Curtis is a very small school, and even though it has a reputation as being kind of an old school school, um, it's one that because it's so small can change quickly and um, change can be affected very quickly. So I have many colleagues who are on board with this. As a composer, I grew up learning about technology. Composers have always been very invested in technology and the latest things and how do we use this, who's he wants to make the new sound and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and also the idea of composition for performers, that all performers should have the opportunity to compose and all composers should have the opportunity to perform. Technology is a bridge that allows that to happen. So creating those points of access for our students and really everyone in our community at Curtis is something that's very interesting to me. I know it's very interesting. It's really a focus for uh, for Vince um, and it's a priority of Roberto's and the school leadership as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, speaking of the leadership of the school, one of your multiple titles is artistic advisor to the president. And I always like, you know, kind of here on Arts Engines for people to be able to get a glimpse to understand kind of these roles that people play at various institutions. So just for, for our audience, right, what does an artistic advisor to the president of a conservatory do? <laughs> what is that I, role? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And when I took the job, uh, with this title, half of my friends said, congratulations for pulling back, you know, so you can just work on being a composer. And the other half said, wow, congratulations. Sounds like you have a lot more responsibilities and that's just great. Um, it's more in the latter side. So uh, a lot of the artistic direction of the school, who, uh, who we work with externally, who we can engage, uh, who are some of the conductors, the, the influencers and, and, and thought leaders in music that we can engage with, um, connecting to outside organizations to really incorporate them into what we do. And so I've been very fortunate to really drive a lot of the new music at Curtis. Run the, I run the new music ensemble um, and direct that and many other initiatives. And then collaborating with faculty when they have ideas about projects that they can put together. So all of that is kind of in my purview, um, really focused on the artistic direction of the entire place, working very closely with Roberto on that. 
Awesome. Awesome. So unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but I always like to, you know, ask of, of my guests, you know, the, especially given this past year, times can get very challenging, really tough. It may seem like certain obstacles on a given day are, are insurmountable. And just wondering in those times of greatest challenge, where do you find um, either solace or um, energy or, or inspiration? What do you draw upon for the strength for you to be able to carry out all of this leadership work? For me, the big inspiration has been learning, taking this time I love to learn and it, it makes it makes everything very exciting for me. I have my amazing wife, who you know, Bella Fristova, and our four beautiful cats. Um, but it's the experience of learning uh, more and being able to take advantage of a very difficult time. But the way that time is spent now is, of course, different. This is the new normal and being able to use that as a point of learning um, across many different areas has been something that's that's been of uh, enormous reward for me personally. Wow. Well, David Ludwig, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's really an honor. Thank you. Mm -hmm.